now we're going to be looking at connecting sql with python so we can create and use databases in whatever application that we're trying to build so for example let's say we want to build just a demo application that stores like customers details and we want to save that to an actual database we can use sql with python to make that possible now when building a proper web application if you're using a framework for example like django Django actually uses something called ORM, so you don't actually have to write SQL code to do this. But that's only if you are using like specific frameworks that have those features. But imagine you are using, let's say, you are building everything by yourself, the old server, and you actually need to code in SQL. Or you are using a framework that requires you to, you know, code SQL by yourself, then this will come in handy. So this is why I'm adding this part to this whole course. So what we're going to do now, I'm just going to show you how to you know, use SQLite to create database, update the database, get response from it and all of that stuff. And we're going to be using SQLite. So SQLite allows us to easily create database using SQL. And if you have Python installed on your computer, SQLite comes with it automatically. So when you have Python installed, what you just need to do is to just, first of all, say import SQLite free. Let me make this a little bigger. So now when you say import SQLite 3, what this does is that it's just going to use the SQLite library that comes with Python. So now when you when we do this, the next thing that I'm just going to do straight is to show you how to create a new database. Now when you're creating a database, it always has the extension .db. Just the way Python has the extension .py and you know other programming languages like JavaScript has .js when you're creating a database file it needs to have the db so before we actually continue coding or start coding let me tell you more about what this is and what we're going to do first of all you need to have basic knowledge of sql because what we're actually doing is we are connecting python and sql together as i said but that means we're going to be running some sql commands in our python code so for example let's say we want to create a database that is called you know um like customer database db right we need we might need to use uh for that we might just need to use a python code to create the database but to actually create a table in that database like customer table then we need to like write the sql commands that you will use normally so if you're familiar with sql which i suggest you should be then you understand what i'm saying like we're going to run basic command like create table then the name of the you know the table we want to create but to do that we're going to use sql to create that but in our python code so without making any confusion let me just get straight into what i'm talking about so before we even start creating any table or inserting any data we need to connect to our database so as i said database always has the file db so we actually need to create our database file where we're going to be you know creating all our tables and all our you know data in it so what i'm going to do is to say sqlite dot connect so what this is going to do let's just say something like customer.db so let's say that is the name of the database right of the database file this can just be like test.database this can just be like let's let's just say this is data.database right let's leave it like this what this is going to do is that it's going to connect to a data.db file in this particular directory so as you can see i'm in this directory named python tutes if I come in here, this is the directory and the only file that is there is app.py. So as I said, this is going to try to connect to a database file named data.db. But in that folder, there's no data like that. There's no database file named data.db. What it's going to do is that if there's no database file like that, it's first going to create a database file named data.db before it tries to connect to it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to store all of this connection into like uh, so I'm just going to remove this into a variable and name it, let's say, connect equals to this. So once I hit connect equals to this, it's going to try to connect to this. I want to create a table. So for me to create a table, I'm just going to do the basic, you know, the basic syntax that we always use to create a table. And I'm going to say connect dot execute, right? So what I want to execute now is a command that i'm going to use to create a table now to execute an sql command we need to use this triple parenthesis this triple quote or whatever you call it so in there 
in here this is where our you know sql command is gonna go so what i'm gonna do is to say create and everything has to be in caps of course because it's sql create table and let's just say something like customer and once we have this customer table created then i want to have all the you know parameters that you should have all the attributes of that table and let me just give this some spacing and put it right here so what i'm going to do now is to say i want to give it an id a customer id and i'm going to say id and when you give it the id you're going to give it the data type so i want to say integer and then i'm going to say primary key so again if you're familiar with sql and relational database in general you should understand what this primary key means so if you don't i'm just going to go through it quickly so what primary key is it is basically just represents you know this entity or this particular data that we're going to create so for example each customer that we're going to create is going to have an id and that is the primary key of that particular customer so that means that if we have the id of that customer we can have access to all other details of that customer so that's just a basic explanation of what primary key is it's like it gives it the identifier that we need to identify a particular customer so we want to give it not no i was saying not no because we want there to be you know uh a value it needs to have a value it cannot be null. so we're going to do the same thing i was just going to say name i want to say text and then we want to say not null. now you can see the difference the only difference is that we have the name which is the name of the you know attribute we have the data type which is text but we don't have nothing like primary key because this is not a primary key we only have one primary key in a particular table and then we just have not null. so we're going to do the same thing now and say h and the h should be an integer and also not no and we put a comma and i think that should be enough for now and let's just you know leave that like that and then what we can just do is to put after here a column so we don't need a comma because that's the last one so after that we can just put a column to like end that and i'm gonna, just going to bring this back here so this is a basic SQL command to create a table named customer and give it three, you know, all these values, all these attributes, which is ID, name, and age. So what I'm going to do is to just close the connection after. So let me say connect dot close. So what I'm doing is that after I have connected to this and executed this command, I just want to close that connection. So as you can see, what I did here is very basic. I just created this customer table this is pure sql command but then i'm executing it in python now let's run this now now if i run this okay cool so as you can see the database file was created in this in my default user so apparently what you need to do is to specify the directory to where you want the database to be created if you're on a Mac and you just put database.db or whatever the name is .db and you don't specify what it is, what it's just going to do is going to go to the user, in my case, which is Tommy, and it's just going to create database.db, right? Data.db or the file right there. So as you can see, let me bring that here. So that's what it just does. So that makes sense. So what we can do now, as you can see, we executed this table and now we know that we have a table created like this. But, you know, how can we see that we've created a table? Now there are different ways we could first of all just insert values into it and then get return those values to know that we actually created a table. Or what I do, I downloaded this application called DB Browser for SQLite. Now, once I run this browser, what it's gonna do is that it's gonna allow me to import an SQLite database in it. So if I say open database. And then I go to Tommy and I say allow. And I say database.db. Now you're going to see that in these tables, it actually creates that customer table in that database.db file. And now we have ID, name, and age. So that is good because that that is good because that is what we need. And now we have the confirmation that we've created this database table in this data.db. Now what we can just do, the next thing we can do is to insert like data into it so to do this is very easy we can actually remove this database right 
this execute because we already created that table or what we can just do is to add a line and we can say something like we want to drop table if exists so what we want to do is that before this is run we want to we can say something like we can have a command and just say connect dot execute and then we can just execute drop table if exists and then the table we want to drop is customer so what this is doing is that before he tries to create the table it's first going to look if there is any table named customer is going to drop it that means going to remove it or delete it and then create this table so this means that every time we run this is you know deleting the customer table and then creating a new one we can easily do that but we can also just remove this uh, let's say just put it as a comment because we already know that in this database file there's already a table named customer so what we can just try to do now is to access that table so what i'm just going to do i'm going to come in here and i'm going to say connect dot execute and what i want to do now is to just try to insert values into this customer table so i'm just going to try to insert just one value you must write write all your commands before closing it because after closing it you can't access it again so what i'm just going to do in this execute i'm going to have my quotes and i'm going to say insert into customer since we already know that there's a customer database right and then what i want to insert i want to insert in the id so i'm just going to copy id I want to insert in the name. I want to copy name, and then I want to insert in the age, and I want to copy age. So what I'm doing is I'm inserting into customer in this attribute. I want to insert. I'm just going to have the backward slash, and I'm going to insert these values. Let me just put here and say values, and the values I want to insert for ID. I'm just going to say one right and then for name i can just do something like tommy and then for the age let me just say something like 99 so i'm i can write all of this so as you can see it gives us an error what we can just do is because of the spacing that's why it gives us an error but since you know what i wrote i can bring that back so as you can see once we try to execute this command what is doing this is also a basic sql command is inserting or creating a new data under this customer under the id name and age and is giving it the values of one tommy and 99 so the order in which you put it is how it's going to do it is how it's going to insert it so for the id is going to take the value of one name is going to take the value of tommy and age is going to take the value of 99 so now we're going to run this and so we get an unrecognized token error which is this right here so actually we can just get rid of that it doesn't really make a difference yeah, we're just inserting these values into this customer day table. So once I run this, I get no response. But I know that this has worked, right? But to actually see that it has worked, what I need to do is to get all the values or, or all the data in this customer database. So what I can do to do that, I can say something like all data, a variable, and I can say connect dot execute. And now I want to execute a SQL command. So what I'm just going to do is to say select star from student. So actually this in this case is customer. So once I say select star from customer and this basically has all the database in this particular data right now. All the data in the database. So what I can just do is say for row in data. So for every single row. I just want to print the row. So once I print the row, this is all data. And I save it. Now let's see what it prints us. So as you can see, if I scroll up right here, it gives us one Tommy and 99. So as you can see, we, are, we successfully know that these values were inserted into this customer database. So what I can just do now is to create another, you know, another data in there. I just copied that line and pasted it again and I can give you a key of two and I can say Tim and I can say 29. Once I save this right and then I run this 
as you can see it gives us that we have one tommy and 99 we have two team and 29 now this is very good this is how you can easily use uh sql database in your python project wherever you're working on so that is what i'm going to show you for this section of this particular tutorial or in this tutorial now as you can see this is just the basics of you know sql with python there's still a lot if you know sql is basically the same thing whatever you want to do let's say you want to delete a database or you know you just want to get a particular data that has a particular id what you can just do is to just you know get with you know filter with id once you know sql commands you basically know how to use this just input your sql command here and execute it and it's going to work so that's going to be all for this tutorial